Welcome back to our FDRX7 build presented by Turn 14 Distribution, where today it's the day you've all been waiting for, where we dyno tune this thing and take it for a rip. Well, that was a quick way to spend about $600 here. Uh, we did do new fender liners and we did do the under tray here with these 99 spec ducts. And as you can see, really what it does is it ties everything together. It certainly gives stiffness and rigidity to the front bumper. We're big fans of that. And of course, now we have proper ducting for the air to pull out through the V-mount. Although I do wonder, there's a ton of like small holes here. There's these little guys here, then there's a couple of vents here, and that's about it. So is that gonna draw the air enough? I, I, I certainly hope so, I think so. I mean- You gotta trust Mass's engineering, I guess, I, I, right? I guess you do. You'll notice this area right here, um, I'm not gonna call it ugly. It's certainly complicated and things are going on. Um, and what JP3 Motorsport does offer is this beautiful cooling panel. And man, it's amazing to see when you put this on here, look at the difference. Look how much cleaner that looks. That is absolutely incredible. Of course, it is built out for the, the, the Gretti V-mount kit and you know the small battery and all that, but wow, like what a transformation. Let me take this out again, just so you can have a look. Because at first I was like, oh, you know what? It's, it's not that bad. And then you put this in place and it is amazing the transformation that you get to the uh, the engine bay, it just cleans it up. And of course, now it's gonna have a better, fu better funneling effect for the air, especially for the air filter. Big thanks to Eric. I think that's your name. Your Instagram handle is S2K Eric. Uh, he had one of these relay covers that I didn't wanna buy because uh, a new one was like almost, I think it was like $150 and it was the whole actual relay. He sent me the cover, so huge thanks to him. Didn't even charge me. He just said, you know what, I'm doing it for the build. Thank you, Eric, so much. And now you can see it was like this and now we have perfection here. All right, guys, now that the engine bay is wrapped up and looking magnificent, it is time to prep this thing to go to the dyno and that means putting in the good stuff the VR1 full synthetic in a 20W50 weight. That's what Joe, our engine builder, wants us to run weight wise. And we obviously know from lots of experience that the VR1's high zinc formula is great at protecting your bearings. And uh, although these motors don't have a lot of bearings, they do have a few that are critical to uh, keep well lubricated. And by the way, we are going full synthetic because we're pre-mixing. So this motor oil is not going in the fuel. One other benefit of us having deleted the oil metering pump system and not using the engine oil to, to lubricate the apex seals is that we can get a little extra spicy with, with, with what's going in the motor. Man, take a whiff everybody. Woo, smell that sweet chili heat. And all you need to do- Is this real DP? Just, just crumble it up and put it in there, man. That's all you gotta do. A Couple more of those. I'm mixing them at a uh, three chip per uh, five liters of engine oil and we're good to go. Done, everybody. A little salt bay, maybe? Damn! And now for the disclaimer. This was, of course, a gag. Do not put Doritos in your very valuable rotary engine, everybody. 
just put Valvoline VR1 in there instead. It is dyno day, and I am here getting ready to drive the FD to the dyno BMS, and look at this. Weather, today's December 5th, 6th, sorry, has held up, so thankfully just a little bit of wetness, nothing bad. Uh, let's fire this thing up. Let's see if this is gonna start right up here. Good old FD, and... Oh, perfect. There it is. The old smoky smokes. There you go. Dial it in, girl. Dial it in. We are on the dyno here at BMS Tuning in Hamilton, Ontario with uh, our friend Radek from RS Tuning on the keyboard. He is not just a GTR tuner. He, uh, he's actually got a real deep love for rotaries. He's built them, he's tuned them. So uh, why not put his skills to use on this project as well? So. Uh, are we gonna make the whole guessing at power thing, PT, or does it even matter? We just want to get through this with a running guess. motor. No, guessing is a great idea. idea. Are we? Yeah, okay. Yeah, all for right. Sure. Okay. Well, I mean, I think the goal all along has been around 350 wheel horsepower at 14-ish psi. So um, I'm just gonna go with that number, 350 wheel. I'm gonna say. 360 this Ooh, time. Oh, people are optimist? Are, what has happened here? It's cool here. It is it cool, is, that's it true. Is cool, it so is cool. It is nice and I cold. Think the and cold air is going to help. It's just a matter of whether this turbo will carry all that uh, coolness up in the RPMs to make that power. Well, or not. no matter what it makes, it's going to sound amazing. And since Radek is a tuner, he's going to be pessimistic. He's going to give us a, a number below 350 because uh, that's what they do. They want to set you up for reality. So what do you say? What are we going to make for power here? 328 at 13 PSI. 328 at 13 PSI. So he's even taking a pound of boost away from, my, <laughs> from me, which I, I can live with. Whatever works, whatever's safe, we're going to go have fun with this thing once we're done here. Essentially what we think is we're blowing out spark and uh, it's just causing the car to not run that great in the mid-range as we get past about five grand it becomes smooth. Um, so this is our last ditch effort before we, uh, you know, call it. And how do you like this fancy tool too? This thing is sick. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's actually pretty exciting right now, I'm not going to yeah, lie. Yeah, yeah. Put the inner gauge in there, you just turn the knob to tighten the gap. It's yeah. science happening. I still like my giant wrench. Let's hit it with a hammer instead. That's it.
Well, there we have it. These are our final results. And uh, we've got good news and slightly less good news. The good news is it made really good peak power. It made almost 370 at the wheel, which is above what we were expecting Not it like, to make. like, what, 14, 14 pounds? 14 pounds? I, like I would, 13, I would right? say it's averaging 13.7, yeah, 13.7 PSI. That's, that's yeah. very healthy. Yeah. And obviously we do have a nice cold air charge today. It's like eight degrees Celsius, so like high 40s Fahrenheit, 40, yeah. which is probably helping us. Yeah. But it's still a nice, healthy number, and the engine yeah. sounds great. However, we do have something a little weird going on down here, don't we? And we're, we, we've tried a bunch of things to try to diagnose yeah, it. Yeah. You're thinking it's somehow ignition related. It seems like it, it, rotaries are so you know, delicate with ignition timing and spark strength. So we're suspecting something's going on with that because is, this is the main load area of, of the graph, right? Anything below you know, 5,000 RPM. The engine's struggling the most to make power here, right? And we are seeing some sort of jumping up and down. We, we, we've tried everything. We, we, we tried different plugs, we tried gapping, uh, dwell time on ignition coils, um, boost leak test, what else was there? Yeah, we uh, checked the crank position sensor. Yeah, yeah. I mean. So we, we've gone through almost everything and you know, conservative on the timing, this and that, and, it, and it's still occurring. So mm. I think we have to still dig a little bit into that, but it does better off over here. Yeah, it smooths right? out nicely and yeah. the top end looks really healthy. Yeah, so. It, I, I think it's, on my hunch, still something to do with the ignition system. Yeah. Possibly a coil or something like that. Um, we you may know, not even you know, feel it on the road. We though, may not feel it on funny, the street. It, yeah. it might be yeah. a complete ripper on the street, but you, street and you'd never exactly. even know that yeah. was there. So uh, anyway, we'll get to the bottom of that. But the good news is the motor's still running. It is making really good peak power. And man, does it ever sound good. Well, thank you, Radic, for uh, suffering exposure on the internet again for us. And thank you, John, and everyone at BMS Tuning for let us, letting us invade your shop for the whole day and uh, pollute your shop with amazing rotary sounds and uh, maybe a little bit of uh, tailpipe emissions too. But it was worth it, everybody. Radic was smart enough to wear a mask, Pete and I, not so much. Well guys, uh, as you can see, it is dark out and uh, I am just cruising home now. This is about as good as a, a driving video you're gonna get. We do have to publish this video ASAP. Once again, we've been cutting it down to the, the last minute due to weather and everything. Uh, man, the, uh, the car makes beautiful noises. The weather is not great, so I can't even show you from a perspective of like actual power what this thing feels like on the road just because it is super wet and cold. I shouldn't say super, it's, it's damp, but it's more cold than anything. But the noises that this car makes right now are absolutely beautiful. Just uh, listen to this. than anything else the noise this thing makes is wonderful that turbo oh look at that and that is just like the slightest amount of throttle this turbo comes on instantly it's quite remarkable like just how quickly it spools up you can hear it. oh perfection so that is it that's all I'm gonna show you here unless you want to listen to this thing cruise down the road as you can see there there's not much else that I can do for you but uh, listen to the sound a couple more times because I'm sure you, you really can't get enough of that
Doesn't this thing just make all the right noises? It is certainly an experience to drive one of these cars and it's certainly a commitment. It is not a Honda. You don't just get in and go. There is certainly something about RX-7s and that's what makes them special is that there is a commitment to the craft, to the car, and that I think is super cool. Certainly uh, for us, it is one of those things where we are now at the end of this video series. So we're not necessarily sure what we're gonna be doing next. We may bring it back in the springtime for a couple of things. There are some minor things that we do need to fix on this car, but all, all in all, it's a super good performer. I wish, I wish I could have driven this car hard on the street for you guys, but such is the life here in Canada. We just, the weather is bad and we, you know, to be able to drive this right now is super, super impressive. We are into December now. And I do have to give a huge shout out to Turn 14 for sponsoring this video series. They are a wholesaler, so you guys cannot purchase from them, but odds are your performance shop or online shop is certainly purchasing from them. And a huge shout out to you guys. Thank you for all the great support and the comments for this video series. It's certainly been a good one. All right, guys, that is a wrap. We will soon be moving on to the Nissan Silvia S15. Uh, that car should be back from paint in a week or two. In the meantime, you may see another vehicle just to uh, cover our bases. 